I'm going to be doing a demonstration and so for those of you that don't know me, um, my name is Alana Wilcox and I'm a spinner, um, a fiber artist, a teacher, a dyer, and so I don't necessarily have um, a business name per se, it's just my name, so Alana Wilcox. Um, and. Yeah, so I'm going to be doing a demonstration today just because um, I've been working on upgrading my website and it's a lot of computer time and not um, as much like creativity and, um, you know, just touching fiber, right? It's, it's, it's more digital. And so the spontaneousness of um, wanting to do something fun and, and play with yarn um, just kind of came over me and I wanted to create this um, demonstration for you because last year I had um, started doing um, workshops more um, virtually and, and online, right? So instead of teaching in person. And one of the workshops that I did was one that was called The Organized Spinner. And so in it, I created this challenge. So I'm gonna see if I can share with you um, my PowerPoint so I have it put together so let's see if this works all right so hopefully with there not being um too much lag you should be able to see on the screen okay so what you're looking at is this list that i put together of all of my work in progress projects that i went through as part of the the workshop and i was encouraging spinners and other fiber artists to do because i feel like a lot of times we will start creating things and you know making projects and we get really excited in the beginning and then basically we just give it up right and it just you know goes to the corner because there's a new shiny object that appears that we want to play with so so one of the things that i created was this challenge for myself and for the participants and basically i called it my 2 for 1 in 2021 challenge and so part of that was the idea that not only do you go through your work in progress list right um so let me come back for a second so not only do you go so not only do you go through um, your your work in progress list, but you also go through like your queue of all of the things that you've wanted to create. And, and the purpose of doing that is that it really allows you to see where and how you spend your time, right? And so in, in generating this list, um, I really wanted to see what were all of the projects that I had, you know, going. Um, and there were some that were going for a very long time. So my oldest work in progress project um, was this crazy quilt that, that I was working on for the better part of like 20 years. And so every time I saw it and I started spinning something new or working on a new project, I just got really um, bummed looking at it because I knew that it was really special, but I just couldn't muster the courage, I guess, to finish it, right? I was like 90% done with it. So so part of this challenge was to, to go through, document all of my work in progress projects, and then also to write down all of the things that I wanted to accomplish, like all of the, the projects that sounded really exciting and interesting. And so the challenge was to complete two of my work in progress projects first, before I started something new. And so I encouraged the participants um, of this class to do it, and I encourage you to do it too. It's not too late. I know it's 2022, but um, there was another spinner in the group that um, came up with the, the challenge of two for um, two, yeah, or it was like, what was it? Um, two for two in 2022, or it was like, you know, four and two or something like that, where you're gonna try to get, you know, even more or double the amount done, right? But Part of my list was that I wanted to spin these scraps that I was saving. So I'm just going to switch back so you can see my, my list over here. And so um, the, the wish list, if you can see, I know that there's like different colors on it. So I can explain to you my color coding system because I really try to be more, more organized in my um, spinning and, and project creation. But one of the things that I really wanted to do was that third one from the top. So it says the Wizard of Oz scrap spin. 
And so that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. So you might be wondering, what, what do I mean by that, right? Well, if we're looking at this list, on the left side, again, those were all my work in progress projects. And so the red colors basically mean that I've completed them. Okay, so I'll show you some pictures of the things that I've completed. And then my wish lists, of course, are the things that I wanted, but the things that are in green are the ones that I'm in the process of working on now. Now, I haven't actually started the the ones in green on the wish list, the, the milkweed, alpaca, and glens fur, right? That's gonna be something that I'm gonna do that's more, um, you know, like time consuming, right? Because I have to blend the fibers and think about what project I want to do and, and all of that. I think I'm going to make a cow with them. So I'm kind of deciding, okay, I'm going to put that one on the back burner because I really needed this creative recharge, right? I really wanted to do this this scrap spin. So basically the, the Wizard of Oz scrap spin, what that means is that over here, um, one of the projects that I completed, right? So what you're looking at, um, are basically all of the projects that were in the, the work in progress side, okay? So one of the things I wanted to do was finish my, my Wizard of Oz shawl. So that's the one in the middle. That, that shawl was basically um, each section that I knitted and, you know, um, either spun for or dyed for it was based off of a character from the Wizard of Oz. And so I saved all of those scraps and I didn't want to throw them away because some of them were hand spun, some of them were glittery and cool looking, you know. So I thought, well, maybe if I save them, I can I can turn them into like a cool, funky art yarn. So that's what I'm going to demonstrate for you today. But other things, you know, I had this drawing of Steve Brule that I wanted to finish. So he's on the, the bottom left and I had a patch, um, a hole in my jeans I wanted to mend. So these were kind of like all of the things, right? But um I was able to also start some some new things too. So this one, I'm, I was really excited to to start um, and to, to finish too. This was on my wish list. I wanted to make this little factory where um, it's kind of a conversion factory, and my family thought it was a bit gross. But this is just my sense of humor to take um, toilets, right? So the toilets go into the factory, and then it comes out pancakes, and just kind of a, an analogy for how I like to live my life, where you take you know the crappy things and try to turn them into something good. So. You know, it really was a motivation for me to get all of these projects done so then I could get and start new ones, right? But um, like I said, I'm going to show you the Wizard of Oz scrap spin today. So let me switch back over here. Okay, wait, hang on to this one here. And I want to um, look at, there we go. Okay, so now I can see your comments um, for those of you that have any questions. And while I'm preparing the fiber and, you know, um, doing my demonstration, if you have any questions, I will check the chat um, area or the comment area to see and um, I will try to answer them. And if you're watching this on the replay, feel free to just tag me in the comments. I'm happy to come back and answer any questions about what you may have um, that you may have. So what I'm going to be doing is not anything necessarily planned. What you're going to be watching right now is just me as a fiber artist having fun. And I think that's really important to see because a lot of times, you know, spinners and anyone that's like learning a new craft or something new in the um, artistic realm will sometimes be so frozen by fear that you don't even want to start, right? Like you're afraid you might make a mistake. You're afraid that you're going to take something that's really precious and, and mess it up. And so the way that I like to approach my creative time and um the, the way that I like to work is is sometimes I, I'm very um, like organized and you know I do a lot of sampling just to make sure that I'm gonna get really good results but other times I like to give myself this space and time to just play okay so there's no you know wrong or right in it there's no um, you know like yarn police or anything like that okay so what, what i'm about to show you is basically just my inner monologue um coming out while i work and and i think it's important that as adults right we continue to ask questions we continue to experiment and explore and and just know that you know what what you're doing um in the act of creating is not ruining and ruining anything right so you might have purchased a really beautiful dyed braid from you know someone in this group or um you know really pretty yarns that you've spun and and you feel like they are i would say almost too precious right like so the idea being that we don't touch them because they're they're too special and i think that 
when when we make something in that category that we don't even enjoy it um, in in the way that it was intended to be enjoyed, like drinking you know coffee out of a china um, teacup, then it's just sitting collecting dust, right? It's just sitting in our drawer. So instead of leaving these scraps in a bag, um, I just thought it would be fun to spontaneously come on and spontaneously play and to have your company um, while I do so. So I'm gonna switch to my overhead camera. So you should be able now to see um, my, my drum carter here, right? So I have um, an Ashford um, carter set up here. And so if you notice um, the, the tines or the metal spikes on it, they're um, spaced relatively you know, far apart. Okay, and so the reason that I'm choosing to use this tool is because the fiber scraps that I have, whether they're, you know, fiber or yarn, um, I don't want them to, one, damage the, the metal tines or, or spokes on, on something that's meant for finer fiber. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So here are two different types of hand carters okay so these are obviously not um the drum carter but they're they're two different types of hand carters and so if you look so i'm going to turn them sideways so you can see hang on i don't want to spike myself okay so if i hold them up to the camera hopefully it'll go in focus you can see that the one on the right um is a little bit farther apart and it might not focus because i have stuff in the background so let me see if i can move this for you okay so this one, let's see if it's going to go in focus. Okay, so these ones over here, right? They're they're kind of set far um, farther apart. Right? You can see that there's like space between them, and th and and that one is really meant more for for carding wool. Okay, so that's like your general hand carder, and then this one over here, oh, too close, extreme close up. Hang on, hang on. Let me see if I can. No, I don't know if it's gonna. Sorry if I'm making anybody motion sick. Okay, so there you go. So if you're looking at these times, you can see how they're a lot closer together, right? And so the um, the fiber and the yarn would get trapped in there in, in such a way that it wouldn't um, allow for the, the fiber to kind of be like open. So I'm going to try to go with one that's wide, um, wider tines set further apart. So that it's, it's referred to as TPI or tines per inch. So I'm going to go with the drum carter that I have that has a lower TPI or tines per inch so that I can get more of these goodies sandwiched in. Okay. So if you're thinking of carding or blending, um, as far as, you know, like hair and, and fiber and working with all of that, if you used um, a, a fine tooth comb, right, on fine hair, that's fine. But if you, if you, you know, like it would work rather, right? But if you took a fine tooth comb and you used it on, you know, someone that has coarser hair, it might get stuck and it may not um, do as, as good of a job of combing or getting knots out and blending. So you would use a wide tooth comb, right? So the same thing with fiber, if I know then I'm going to be using these large chunks, okay, of, of fiber and, and scraps and all of that, then I just want to be mindful of, of the tool pairing that I'm going to be using. But again, there's, there's no right or wrong, so I can try both um, if you would like to see the, the outcome. Okay, so someone asked, um, what TPI is my drum carter? So I don't know offhand. This is just like, let me see. I don't even know the name of this one. It's just like the... Um, I forgive me. It's just it's just the like um the the smaller of the the Ashford drum carters, but I can come back and and answer answer that. I can I can measure it for you if you want. I mean, I would say by looking at it, like one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. It's got like about six or seven, but I know it's more like the square inch, right? So they have what is it like seventy two TPI or like a hundred TPI or something like that. So I don't know. I'll go measure the square inch for you and I'll let you know. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm going to do a couple of things, okay? So the first is I'm going to examine like what my scraps are, right? Cuz I have all of these different scraps. Some most of them are from the shawl that I was making, but others were from other shawls or other projects. So I kind of have ones that look more like this, right? So it's basically just yarn and threads and some are longer and some are shorter. I even have things like feathers in here. I have, you know, fabric in here. So I have all of these different um, elements. Now, the other thing that I like to do with my scraps, so I can I can show you too, is I, I kind of 
I kind of have a tiered system of scrap, okay? So I know, you know, some people might think that um, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, not like so organized, but, you know, that I'm, I don't know what the word is, not even compulsive, but I, I really like to, to categorize things. I don't know, I just, I get a kick out of that. So I have the, the balls of yarn that I've spun or I've bought that are, you know, I'm gonna refer to as being like a full ball, right? But then maybe I use it for a project and I don't have enough to make a whole new something, but it's not like a little teensy scrap. So for those, what I do over here, I just got a whole bunch of these little um, cardboard bobbins, okay? And so I'll usually put um, scraps of all different kinds of yarns and then I'll just use them for like art weavings, like um, saori weaving, things like that. You know, so just I have, and, the, and they could be fun for like scrap blankets or things like that. But um, I would say here, <clears throat> these ones are probably no more than like 10 yards in, in that form. So whatever couldn't fit on those, you know, to, to be used that much, that, that's what I have here. Okay, so I'm going to move the drum carter for a second, just so you can see how I'm going to play. All right, so I'm going to have scissors right because I may want to cut these um, down into smaller pieces so I have I have scissors with me the other thing that I have um, in addition to, to the carter I have um, tweezers so if I need to pull stuff out that doesn't um, look like it's going where I want it to go I have that and then I have um, this little tool over here for like scraping and picking up the fiber if anything gets stuck in in the carter okay so I'll be using those in a little bit I also have a piece of um, scrap denim fabric down, so it's going to protect my table if I'm going to use this tool here. So this is um, a flicker, and so I can use this to kind of um, smack and, and um, flick open either the fiber or the yarn if I wanted to get it a little bit more hairy and fuzzy, right? So depending upon what you're using, you might want to open it up a bit more so that it has... I would describe it more as like a gripping power, right? So like if I'm looking at yarns like this, okay? So these are more commercial yarns. These are not hand spun yarns. So if I'm if I'm looking at these these types of yarns, I might want them to get a little bit um, like fuzzier or or fluffier, so that when I'm when I'm going to like card them and spin them, it's it's going to almost act like like Velcro, or it's going to have a little bit more traction in sticking. Okay, and so the the reason for that. So wait, hang on. Let me go to my. Let me go to my heart to heart cam here. Okay. And so the reason for that, the, um, that, that I want that to happen is that especially if I'm going to cut the fibers so that the, or the yarn so that they're like really small, teeny tiny scraps, right? Um, I don't want them popping out of the yarn. Okay. So I don't want them to turn into like a pill or just become completely dislodged. Okay. So the idea being that if I fluff them up a bit, then there's going to be a little bit you know, on, on the edge of the yarn to grab onto the, the wool so that it'll, it'll twist together better. Okay. Um, okay. So someone said, how did I clean my feathers? Um, well, I don't actually have, um, you know, like feathers that are like from a bird. I have like the, the feathers that, well, okay. Like I didn't like actually pluck a bird. Like I don't actually own like chickens or things like that. Um, but I've gone to craft stores cause I know someone like said something about my, my little flower. I like to make, um, you know, like little like flower accessories and things like that. So I'll take, I'll take feathers and, and I'll, I'll put them in. So they're just from a craft store, um, types of feathers. Okay. So what I'm going to do, let me go back to my overhead. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so I have I have some feathers, right? I don't necessarily need to um, card these in, but these might come into play when I'm spinning. But again, there's there's no right or wrong, so we can throw one in and see what happens. The thing about feathers, though, is that the the ends of them, right? Okay, so let me do the extreme close up. But the ends of them are you know pretty um, like thick, and and they're not as um, flexible, right? So like when I'm spinning. Ideally, I would want the, the feather um, to be kind of going in this direction. Technically, um, you know, as far as like if this is my orifice and I'm, I'm spinning over here. So like if this is, you know, the direction of, of how the yarn is going, I would want the feather to go in, in that direction. Um, you certainly could lay it so that it's, you know, um, perpendicular. But I find that this part is going to then stick out. So um, what we can do, again, for the fun of it, 
instead of actually spinning the feather as is, I can just go ahead and remove the fuzzy parts, right? So sometimes people will say, you know, how do you spin feathers? I mean, like spin it however you want, right? So we can pluck the fluffy parts off and then not have the stem part, okay? So let's just go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go ahead and take all these little fluffy feathery edges and I'm just going to de-feather de it. I don't even know. So I'm sure there's somebody in this group that knows what the um, scientific name is of this part or component of um, a feather. I'm just going to refer to it as the fluffy bit, as opposed to the spiky central bit. <laughs> that's my that's my technical jargon for you today. OK, so there we go. I got my fluffy bits and then, you know, um, I suppose I could use this for for something else. But, you know, I'm not I'm not going to um, for right now. OK, so the other things that I have here, right, like I have all of this like shiny metallic stuff that was on a cone and you know I know that it looks a little bit on the coarse side kind of like steel wool but it's it's actually relatively soft and it, it is um you know um a synthetic yarn of of some kind so I don't know if it's I don't I don't know exactly what the makeup of it is but we can we can throw this on it it'll kind of behave like Angelina or any of those um types of like metallic you know threads or accents okay so I'm going to cut this up and let's see. So I have parts that are longer yarns, right? Like longer threads. So I have embroidery thread in here. So what I might do, um, I just might go through and say, okay, I know something like a cotton embroidery thread is not going to have that, um, like the, the fiber halo that I was talking about, like how I want it to, to go around my yarn. Um, when it's when it's spinning right to go with the with the um, the wool and stuff So I might do one of two things with this right so again, I'm just playing. There's no <laughs> there's no right or wrong I'm just playing with you guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of go and flick it Okay, so when I'm when I'm using this tool what I'm doing is I'm basically taking it and I'm tapping it against the um, the table and again I have a piece of denim here right to protect to protect the surface and I'm just kind of tapping tapping it to rough it up I'm not I'm not trying to rip it and and and, and pull it and tear it right because I don't I don't want to do that um, but I'm trying to just get it so that it has a bit of, of a halo so that it'll it'll have you know the the gripping power because um, the embroidery floss like obviously it kind of goes against the creation of the embroidery floss the companies when they when they spin them and they make them they don't want them to fray by the time the person has passed it through the um you know canvas several times right so i'm just going to go ahead and cut this up and so what i'm doing size wise is i'm going to try to keep things relatively uniform in size like I'm going to try to make it so that most of what I have is about an inch or so okay um, if I have fibers that are shorter than that like if you've ever tried to spin cotton when it's not um, <laughs> when it's not in embroidery form um, embroidery thread form already um, it's a very short staple fiber right and so um, the shorter the staple or the shorter the length of the fiber what what will happen is that it's going to need more twist and so the fibers that I'm going to be blending this with are all different types but for the most part their staple length is about you know three to four inches so I don't want to get shorter than an inch because then either one it'll work its way out and it, and it won't stick or um, it'll it'll be competing with the longer fiber that I'm going to use the, the wool as my base. Okay. So this would probably be the smallest that I would use. If I have pieces that are smaller, I can put them in, but just like in the overall design thinking, that's, that's kind of why I'm going with this size. Okay. So see, like I have these bits here, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't cut these up. So this, this purple bit. Okay. So you can see the projects that they came from. So this one over here is actually, and I don't know, I think I made it, I minimize it. Hang on, let's see. So that one comes from these gloves over here. So on the left, I had a bunch of leftover thrums. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay. So I had a bunch of leftover thrums or those like little, you know, confetti pieces on the top left. So I saved them, right? I didn't know how many I was going to need. So, so I made more. So that's going to be um, one from, from that spot. 
for, from that project. So just so you can see like where, where things are, right? It's like follow that fiber or follow. So, so these ones, you know, are um, not like five inches long or, or super long, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave them this size, okay? So I have those little bits. Let's see, okay, so I have some yellow brick road. <laughs> I have some of Dorothy's slipper section, right? So I have the red Angelina. So I'm just going to, um, you know, throw these in and just make my little pile here. So let me go back so I can see if there are any comments. Okay. All right. So I'm just curious for those that are, are watching um, during the live just so that I can see, do any of you do this with your scraps or what do you do with your scraps? I know some people um, like to take them and, you know, put them as like stuffing or filling for, for other projects. See, just so you can see. So I'm making... I'm making little scraps about you know two to three inches long so that there'll be enough that when I'm spinning it'll 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 grip it in but then I'll have like little pieces that stick out so what do you do with scraps I know some people um, in some places might take them and they'll say to like put them outside for birds nest but then other people will say that you know they can um, get like really sick or injured if you if you use your scraps for that so I'm curious what do what do people normally use or what have you used it for in the past okay so someone said that they haven't used them yet but they've collected a lot yeah so do they just go into the garbage right see so i'm just kind of making um big chunks you know they're kind of knotted and matted together already which even though that's something that we might fight as a fiber artist or like a knitter when we have it in a ball right um the fact that they're getting tangled now is just going to help me in keeping them a, co a cohesive bunch. Okay, so someone else said that they have a bunch saved to do something like this, but they haven't gotten around to it yet, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so here's this is this is exactly the thinking that that I'm talking about, right? We save things because they sound like they would be fun to do, they sound exciting, but we never get to it. So that's why I was like, you know what? I'm just going to to jump the line, so to speak, of my um, work in progress projects and my my wish list, so that I can get these fun things in. Okay, so this over here was a little silk braid of fiber that I dyed um, for this this book I'm writing on my color matching process, and so I had a little bit extra, and I made a little braid for it, but I didn't need it anymore so I didn't know what to do with it so I'm just gonna kind of open it up so that it has again that little grippy quality so again these all come from different projects like over here hang on so over here I have some silk ribbon so over here this was um, some leftover silk embroidery let me see if I can get close so you can see right so it's just leftover silk embroidery ribbon um, and that one came from my crazy quilt. So I don't know if I showed that one. Hang on. So over here. So I have a ton, a ton of like little bits and bobs of different embroidery threads, ribbons, all of that, that I have like no idea what I was going to use it for. I originally, this quilt was supposed to be like, um, I would say like a queen size bed size, but but now it's maybe like, like each block is about 12 inches. So it's about like four feet by four feet. And so the idea being that I didn't want to keep working on it any longer. It wasn't making me happy. So I, I got as far as completing two, two um, blocks, right? So all of them were embroidered and done, but I literally stopped at two blocks for like, I don't know, 10 years, 13 years, right? Like I just stopped working on it. And so when I when I stopped working on it, um, I have like all of this stuff that I was saving and collected to use on it. So because I decided to cut it off early and I was like, you know what, I don't I don't want to work on this anymore. Um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm done with this. Right. So so because because of that, now I have all of these little um, extra bits that that I can use. And so I'm really excited about going through and either using it for embroidery or you know something like that or just doing what i'm doing now okay so let's see what are some of the ideas people said okay so someone said that they use them for yarn ties yeah like so over here like this one this one is probably long enough that i could use it for a yarn tie but 
you know what? I don't even know what it is. So I'm just going to cut it up. I think, let me see, where did this come from? So this is, this is also kind of the, the fun part of doing this, right? Is that when you go through and you save all of these scraps, you, you have like these memories that are part of them, right? And so when you put them all together, it kind of becomes, I don't know, like a little um, memorial to all the other projects that you've created. But honestly, I don't even remember what this was in. I can tell, okay, so I can tell that this is probably one of my early, hang on, one of my early spinning yarns because of um, how uneven the draft is and how uneven the, the ply twist is, okay? And so it's kind of nice that, you know, even the things that maybe I wouldn't know what to do with as a, you know, um, a, a spinner or a knitter now that I can kind of give them new life and, and touch them and play with them and revisit all of the fun memories and experiences and the projects that I've had, whether it was in purchasing the fiber or using it like over here I have, okay, so this over here is <clears throat> a yarn. I don't remember where I got it from. I think I got it in like a local store, but I made a shawl that I gave to my sister-in-law and she just absolutely loved it. And it just made me so happy because it, it kind of had this like boho, you know, hippie vibe to it. And that's just the kind of person she is. And it just made me really happy to, to make something that I didn't necessarily want to wear myself, but that I thought like totally suited her. And now I can have a little bit of it in whatever this yarn is going to become. Okay, so let's see. So someone said, I say fluff for carding or felting and yarn scraps for something. Yeah, so, you know, the, the thing is, is that sometimes we can also become a hoarder and save and save and save, right, without actually using it. And so the whole, I guess, like point or, um, you know, purpose of me doing the, the two for one in 2021 um, challenge was that I really wanted to get to a place where I just had materials and supplies that everything that I had made me happy, right? So like if you're saving the scraps and they make you happy and you know, you want to, um, you want to use them, but you don't know for what, then to get to a place where you don't have any more, um, projects in in a queue and you can just jump right into those things that excite you and that's really where as a spinner or a fiber artist i want to be so i know people might be like i thought this was a demonstration like why are you just talking but you know there's there's more to it i think than the actual act of carding it's it's also you know the the process of of creation that um i don't know just to kind of enjoy and savor and savor it right sometimes we might like rush through just trying to get things done but i've i've spent a lot of time working on work in progress projects to get them finished that i really want to savor and enjoy the ones that were in my queue okay so i think right now though in the interest of time i've got enough stuff to blend now what I want to do, right, um, since this is kind of like a spontaneous thing, let me just put all my other scraps away, is I really want to kind of like examine this and, and think and like see, okay, so if I, if I um, squint and I look at it, right, it looks like I have a lot of dark values of colors, right? So um, if if we're talking about, for example, the color red, it looks like I have a lot more like maroon and, and dark burgundy or like darker colors as opposed to something that's lighter like a pink. So in order to make the scraps be the feature, what I might want to do is use a light color wool base, okay? Because if I used black, then that would be high contrast, so my, my darker ones may not stand out, but then these lighter bits might. So just for the fun of it, what I might do, because again, I'm playing, right? There's no right and there's no wrong in this. What I might do is I might set up my drum carter so that half of it has the white wool on one side, then the other half has you know, black wool, and then I can compare the two and see which one do I like better um, when I'm spinning, because I'm going to I'm gonna rip it up into strips, okay? So I have this base, so I'm excited about that. I want to take um, the black shiny stuff and cut it up, and again, trying to have it be about an inch or so 
I'm gonna have these other chunky bits, but we'll just go with that. Okay. So, what I have in the way of fiber, I have I have different I have different fibers right now. So these fibers were ones that I really didn't know what to do with, right? So what's nice about this is that if you have stuff that's not enough for a full project, you're using scraps anyway. So like, why not just use the stuff that you don't know what to do with? <laughs> so, so I have this fiber that I don't know what to do with. I have some stuff that's really soft. I have some stuff that's, it seems like this was a down fiber because it's very springy and it's not so soft. So um, when you're trying to think about what type of fiber to use for the base, um, I'm trying to think of um, fibers that are going to be very grippy, right? Because I, I want it to, to grab onto um, the threads, especially if I have silk threads and silk ribbons, I really want to make sure here, let's switch over. I really want to make sure that the fiber is going to be, um, you know, grippy and, and grab onto whatever I've like prepared and, and brushed, right? So I'm probably not going to use things that are slippery or that um, like are a longer, a longer wool. I might want to use things that are more downy. So if you, if you really wanted this to um, wear well with like abrasion, maybe going the, the down um, breeds, or if you want, if, if the scraps you have are on the softer side, maybe you want to use something that has a higher crimp. So I do have um, some Cormo fiber that was washed and I had it processed, but it has, um, unfortunately the mill that processed it, they, they put like neps in it. Cause if you're not, um, like hand processing a Cormo fleece um, and the, the mill that you send it to doesn't know like how to process a fine fiber because they're, they're going through such um, large volume of fiber, it can, it can get like neps and knots in it. So even though the fleece was really beautiful to start with, the act of processing it put, put these unwanted pieces in. But since I'm going to have all of these pieces in it already and the fiber is clean and lovely, um, I might use that as my base for the white. And then for the darker one, I have I have some um, Corydale fleece, and then I have some of these like rust colors. So I don't have black in this room. I have it in my my other room, but um, I can always do one with some some black and then I can post pictures so you can see like the before and after. So I'm not going to be doing any of the spinning today. I'm going to card now though so you can watch that process. But on Friday um, around the same time around one o'clock I'm going to come on and I'll do another demonstration so you can see my spinning techniques. Um, and then this way it'll give those people that are watching the replay some time to like schedule it because I know like I said I did it a little bit spontaneously. Okay so here we go. I'm going to go switch over now to my overhead and I'm going to try to tilt up my camera. So I think you might be looking up my nose. All right, so I'm going to go, I think, with the Cormo. Because, you know, sometimes sometimes you meet a fleece or like a type of a sheep and then you're just drawn to them. And I don't know, like once I went to one of the fiber festivals, I don't know if it was... Um, Maryland or, or Rhinebeck, but like I touched a greasy Cormo fleece and like that's it. It had my heart. So So Cormo just became my thing even though it's like the most finicky for me anyway um, Difficult fleece to, to prepare, but if if you've never had the opportunity to spin um, A Cormo fleece that was hand combed. I highly 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 recommend it Okay, so I'm just getting on my little bits because I want those to be in the yarn Okay, so there we go. All right, so the way that I'm going to do this is this this part here is called the infi tray, okay? So I'm gonna be putting in the fiber in this space here. And then when I lay my, my scraps down, um, instead of running it through here, I might just like nest them on. So, or, you know, like um, lay them lay them down just like that so that they get stuck in between. So I'm going to kind of be creating um, a fiber parfait, if you will, where I'm going to have it sandwiched. So I'm going to do a layer of fiber, a layer of my scraps, a layer of fiber, a layer of my scraps. So it's going to um, have two layers of scraps and then one, um, three layers of, of fiber. Okay. 
sweet. I'm just I'm going to look at the comments real quick. So someone says, "How old is how old is the bag?" So many goodies. Um, so the the scraps that I've saved or the fiber bag. Just let me know which one you were asking about, and I can answer you. Okay, so someone said, I just did a soul collage for the first time this past Sunday. It's done with imagery from magazines, but as I watch you, I'm thinking it'd be done with fiber scraps. Yeah, so it's definitely, um, you know, a really cool way, I think. So let me get my fiber. I think to just kind of relive your, your favorite memories and your projects. Now, as I'm touching this, right, this, this, um, this Cormo here, so you can see, all right, so it's really really nice but i don't know if you can see this little piece like right i don't know if it's going to show up on the camera but like right over here there's like a little nep okay and it's not um like see like right there and so um the thing about cornmeal too is that it's a fine fiber so when when i go to spin it i want it like can you see like there's like those little those little bits right there um and so those are those are going to be things that i'm going to want to stop and and pick out so because i'm doing you know, all of these lumps, I'm just going to go ahead and feed it in. So I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me talking. I'm going to move my microphone. So that the sound of the drum carter doesn't hurt people's ears. Okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead. Ooh. I had to prop it up so you could see it. Oh wait, you know what? Drum cartridges don't work unless you have the bands on. So when you take it out the box, it's important. So over here, to get this to work, um, there is a drive band, okay? So there's a pulley system. And I haven't used this in a while. So I should probably look and see how it goes. So I'm gonna have, all right. <laughs> I told you this was a very spontaneous thing, okay. So I'm looking um, for people to tell me, how did these, how does this cord go around here? It's been a while since I used this one. It doesn't go like that. I know that there's like a weird, does it go like this? There we go, okay. I'm gonna do it like this. If this is wrong, again, there's no, okay, does this work? Let's see, if it doesn't work, we'll just go to the hand carters and say that that was my plan all along. <laughs> all right. Nope, that's not going to work. Wait, it has to actually go on this part here. Hang on. There we go. I think everybody's happy now. Okay. So because the Cormo is a very fine fiber, I want to make sure that it's like opened up as much as possible. So you can see here how it's kind of like getting clumped together. So I might actually want to open it up even more and just to help it along. Okay, so now there's a brush over here, right? And if you can see, there's a little knob. If I just crank it, then it's just gonna like kind of sit on top. So what I'm gonna try to do is like angle it so that the, the bristles are gonna brush down. There we go. So on my other um, drum carter, I have a super card that I use more than this one because I don't really make novelty yarns very much. There we go. See, so it just kind of like pats it all down. Now, if it gets stuck, I have this little tool here, right? And then I can take it and I can scrape the, the fiber that's getting stuck around here. But I don't know if you can start to see those like little white um, like neps and knots, right? So those are the, those are the parts that, um, I wouldn't really enjoy in a fine yarn picking out. Okay, so yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of tease it open with my hand. So yeah, this is an Ashford, an Ashford Carter. So what I'm trying to do, and I know I said I was going to use black, right? But it doesn't look like this um, space here is wide enough for me to get the darker fiber. So I'll show you how I handle that. 
just gonna put more and I'm gonna try to keep it so that the lighter fibers are here the other thing that you could do also is just lay it on this side as well okay so let me move it so you can see right so I'm just gonna put it on like this and that can work too again there's no right or wrong in this this is just for fun so play experiment see what you like see what you don't And normally a drum carter should be clamped down, but in the interest of being able to have my camera show you what I'm doing overhead, I just have it sitting on a plastic container. So normally they're a little bit more grounded and secure. Yeah, so this is really good for like novelty yarns or coarser wools, but again, the Cormo is a finer wool, so I'm not really trying to um, like card it or blend it because the fiber is already prepared. I'm just trying to get it like opened up so that the little yarns and stuff like that can stick into it. Okay, so yeah, I think this is working better because it's just so grippy that it's like not even coming off here and I don't feel like fanning it out. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go like this. So see, in the act of playing, right, we discover what we like and what we don't. And again, I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing this like to sell it or anything like that. I'm just doing it for myself. Okay, so on this side over here, I'm going to use um, some of this darker Corydale. Okay, so this is in fleece form, like um, in lock form rather. It's not, it's not carded. So for this one, and it's um, still a little bit greasy, so that's another thing too, like if you're trying to make something that's more of like, um, I wanna say like a novelty yarn, like what I'm trying to do. I really personally, I, let, me, let me try to get this, there we go, okay. I guess that's as, as high as my, cam my, my camera will turn, my computer will turn. But personally, I really don't like working with grease fleece because um, I, don't, I don't like the way that lanolin feels when you're spinning it, you know, it just, it feels dirty to me. But in this instance, the lanolin is going to help lock everything in. Now, if I go to wash it, of course, you know, it'll, um, it'll come out. So I can be mindful if I want to use hot water or not. And also, it's not necessarily recommended to tease open um, locks of fiber over your, your carter because then all of the dust and the debris will fall right into what you're working. So I'm just going to move this away. And so you can see still my hands working here without reintroducing all the stuff that's falling out. So in essence, I'm basically just teasing it open. But this will go, this one I'm gonna put through the, the liquor inside or the in, in, on the infit tray. So this way, this way you can see um, the difference. Okay. So yeah, this still has some lanolin in it. So it'll definitely help with grabbing the fibers like the silks or the um, you know the metallics right like so so these ones over here the lanolin the lanolin will help grab it okay so I think that should be good probably need a little bit more but and you can always you know prepare the fiber first and then once it's carded. You know, take it off the drum carter and then run it through a second time. Okay, so see, so I'm going to get this variegation right, like where one side is going to be a little bit darker and then one is going to be lighter. And then because it's greasy and fine wool, I'm going to use this tool here. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this tool. And when I card it, there is a groove over here that I'm just gonna go and run under like that. Okay. Let's just try to pull this up. 
So when when you do this with a fine wool, again, like Cormo or like a grease fleece, this is going to be what's going to cause neps or those pills, those like short um, little bits in your yarn. But again, I'm doing this for the fun of it, for novelty. It's just this is not necessarily good form, you know, as far as like when you're working with this type of fleece. So I don't know if you can see um, as I'm dragging it, do you see all those little kind of like little like spots? So that's, that's what I'm talking about as far as like the knots go. But that's okay, because this is going to give me the texture. Okay, so now I have this little tool here that I'm going to use. to pull up and try to get more of this fiber off the little the little drum over here so yeah if you're someone that's interested in purchasing um you know um a drum carter and you're like well what type should i get Definitely, you know, thinking about what types of preparations do you enjoy spinning. So if you like to spin a novelty style yarn, then having ones that are more open or have um, fewer times per inch is going to give you um, less of a thorough carding, right? But I would never, ever, ever in a million years do this with my Patrick Green um, super card. Okay, so I have, um, so you can see like how much I'm putting, right? As far as like how much I'm building up. So I've probably gone, I would say maybe like, mm, I don't know, not even quite a quarter of the way. I, I, don't, I don't want this to be loaded up completely, right? Because now is the fun part of sandwiching in all of those extras. So again, I'm going to do a layer of fiber, then I'm going to put in my little add-ins, and then I'm going to do um, more fiber, more add-ins, and then more fiber, okay? So I'm um, just gonna kind of make this in two piles so that I have my ones that I'm gonna lay on now and ones that I'm gonna lay in after. And I'm gonna just try to do a little bit at a time, okay? I don't wanna just dump the whole wad of everything all at once. And you know, I have this longer bit over here, so I might cut this up a little bit more, but everything that I have is relatively um, on the shorter side, I have this part of the feather, so I'm just going to get more of those little fluffy bits off, and then I'm not going to use the quilt part. Okay. Okay, so to do this, obviously, again, yeah, you can do this with a blending board. I don't have a blending board, um, just because, again, I don't really do novelty yarns as much, but I'm just kind of just trying to, like, tap them out and what what I want to for, for myself anyway again there's there's no right or wrong um I just want to try to get these to be in alignment with the fiber as much as possible because even though they're going to be different lengths and different fibers if all of them are going in the same direction um then it might make it easier when I'm going to draft them out if they're going um more perpendicular then they'll stick out more and they may not be as locked in if they are on the smaller size right so like if it's a longer fiber yeah sure like going perpendicular would be good but like wait <laughs> going perpendicular would be good but if i have you know long fibers going this way and then i have a short one that's going this way it may not um grab it as well so i'm just kind of being careful because you know you don't want to hurt your knuckles and your fingers but see i'm just trying to get it so that the fibers are kind of sitting there goes some emerald, emerald city yarn. Okay, so now here I have fabric, okay? So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this fabric for um, Friday and I'll show you how I'm gonna incorporate it in. Yes, technically I could put it here, but because the, fa the, the fabric is um, a different, I wanna say like way that the scrap is prepared, I'm gonna save this one, okay? So I'm gonna show you on Friday. So you have to tune in to see how it gets used. <laughs> All right, so you can start to see, right? I have my little bits and bobs going in. I'm gonna add some more. So 
So for those people that said that they saved the scraps um, and they haven't used the, um, the scraps yet, I'm curious what types of projects or ideas do you have for this type of yarn? I know a lot of people always say, well, you know, novelty yarn is like super fun for, um, you know, spinning and making, but what do I do with it? You know, and so I have my answer, but I'm, I'm curious, like, what, what do you do with it first? I'd like to know. So see, like, all of these here, I'm just trying to get them to be a little bit more in alignment. Maybe the next layer, when I put them in, I'll be a little bit more, um, you know, carefree, cavalier in how I lay them down. It already looks awesome. I know. See, so that's, that's, that's the um, part, right? So someone said it already looks awesome. But the idea being that, like what what is awesome about this is a couple of things for me anyway that you know I wasn't planning it right that there there's a beauty to the the serendipity or the the randomness right like I just I love these colors over here um so there's definitely fun in that aspect of it okay so there goes my big lumpy clumpy um thrum that I created there goes there goes the cotton that I carded up right so the and I might try to like squish those in a bit definitely would not recommend doing this on an electric one because you can um you know definitely like rub skin off but so i'm gonna try to get these guys to lay in but yeah the, the beauty of it is like when when do i stop right and so you know i can keep coming up with like all different I don't say criteria, but I can say, okay, you know, instead of going from light to dark, maybe I'm going to go from like yellow to blue, and then I'm going to only use scraps that are not yellow and blue, right? So like you can have so much fun with this and, but I want to know what do you, what do you use it for? So someone says we with the decorative accents on hats. Yep. Okay. So someone else said, that's why I haven't done it yet. Cause I don't know. Well, so for me, right, I like I know with weaving, that's kind of easy to, to throw it in and that and that works well if you are more of like the art weaving um, type. But to me, OK, so imagine like, you know, did you ever make a sweater, especially like if it has, um, you know, like plain stock in that, right? It's a plain color and it would be so fun i think like if you made maybe like a pocket you know that would go and you can you can probably even like knit up a pocket as like a patch and then like sew that on so that it like stands out you know you could probably even sew that onto jeans okay see so this is gonna go now in my project queue of what do i do with this yarn so now now i'm gonna have to make a pocket Yeah, definitely. Like, so if, you know, you celebrate Christmas and you have a Christmas tree and you want to make little ornaments, I mean, I guess you could technically put ornaments pretty much anywhere, right? Any kind of decorations. There we go. Okay. So it's looking like, you know, um, here. So just so you can see, right, it's looking like I have about the same thickness of, um, you know, fiber add-ins as the fiber part, right? So now I'm gonna go and try to sandwich these guys with another layer of, of fiber. Okay, so someone said, I think I would use any yarn spun with the bits and bobs would work well in weaving. Um, I have saved most of my early hand spun skeins for weaving. Once I get around to repairing the table looms, I salvaged, yep, so there you go. It could also be really cool for like fringe on a scarf, right? So it doesn't have to be necessarily on something that would be next to your skin. So if you look at like patterns and things, you know, it could be any kind of decorative element, especially, you know, depending upon how you um, spin it, right? So if you spin it in a way that there's like a super high amount of twist, and then even if you fold the yarn too, those are all ways that you can lock in all of these little extras. And it's kind of like, um, <laughs> you know, if you eat vanilla ice cream, you know, vanilla ice cream is great, right? But to me, it's always exciting when you're eating something like, you know, I don't know, like cookie dough and you get to a cookie dough bit. So to me, I'm like super excited to get to the little scrap bits and like see how they, how they spin out. Okay. So this looks good for the white side. 
So now I'm going to go take some more of that Cory dough. Just tease it a bit. Yeah, so, you know, it's interesting um, in talking about decorations because I think as a spinner, I often get really, I don't want to say like sad, but I, I often get bummed that I really don't like wearing wool, you know, but I love working with it, right? And I really don't like um, working with neutrals, like I love working with color, but I really don't often wear color, like I just threw this one on today, this is probably like the only colorful thing I have in my wardrobe. Um, so it's it's often challenging to think like how how can I use these these um, colorful things. So one of the things that I did was I made a little um, and I can I can go see if I can grab it to show you, but I made this little um, like it's like a glass a glass bowl cover um, so that if I have like a, a vase for like flowers or things like that, it just makes it. The, the bottom part if you if you um, have flowers in, in a vase look more more decorative. So exploring all of the different decorative um, patterns that are out there and you know it's just it's it's amazing what people have have thought of that doesn't have to be worn. It doesn't have to be, you know, socks. It doesn't have to be a sweater. It could just be something also that's kind of beautiful. So as a a little side note, um, you know, one of the things that I guess as, as an artist that that really, I don't want to say like frustrates me, but maybe maybe I'm curious about why it is the idea. And maybe you've experienced this too, right? That why why can't yarn be art in of itself, right? Like the act of spinning um, and creating something doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be something. And so it can be just a skein as like a wall decoration, right? In of itself. It could just be that the yarn is in of itself completed and finished and whole and beautiful and it doesn't have to be anything. Um, but, you know, if there's a technique of creating something that looks fun and exciting to us, but we can't imagine what it could be used for, then to me, I think that that limits the joy that we can experience in, in the craft and the hobby that we do simply because, you know, we are living by or following these artificial rules. Okay. So if you're someone that has never done this before, but it looks like it's fun, but you just don't know what it would be, like, it's okay. It can just be its own thing, right? Like sometimes, you know, you don't have to necessarily put all the square pegs in the round holes. They can just exist as pegs. <laughs> and not be part of anything else. Okay, so I'm going to just put a thin layer. There you go. Sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera. I was looking at what I was doing, so I wasn't going to take any skin off. Now I know where the expression having skin in the game comes from. Or having skin in your yarn. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take these little bits. And you know, I, they're um, not necessarily showing up as vividly um, on, on the camera. They look a little bit more muted and dull. but. There's lots of color variety throughout, and I think having this neutral background is going to really make them pop. So let's see what we can get from it. Yeah, so um, someone said that um, it can be captured in a beautiful photograph that we hang on the wall. Exactly, like, you know, I know um, a lot of times people will say to normalize things, like, can we normalize that yarn is art in of itself? That we can be yarn creators and artists. We don't have to be a knitter. We don't have to be, um, you know, a weaver. It could just be making for the fun of making. And for those of you that know how project oriented of a, um, a spinner I am, that might be something a little bit unusual for you to hear me saying, but you know, what works for me may not necessarily work for you. And so you just got to find the things that make you happy. feel like Bob Ross here. <laughs> 
but it's it's really true, you know. So in talking about, you know, yarn being art also, um, one, of, one of the things that I was intrigued by as, as an artist is that I've never actually submitted my artwork into an art show before. And I'm not really familiar with like all of the rules and um, I don't want to say like etiquette, but like all of the things that you're supposed to do, you know, the supposed tos. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious if anyone has ever tried to actually submit yarn as a thing in of itself into a show and was accepted because in my you know experiences of going to art galleries and everything like that i've never just seen art um yarn not necessarily in a fiber exhibit or you know an art um like a, a fiber art show like you know at a festival or something like that i've never seen yarn in a museum just as art and so that's kind of one of my my missions this year is to try to change that. So if you're able to beat me to the punch or know someone that has, I would love to know who they are and to celebrate them for doing it. Oh, okay. So I have a little bit more fabric. So again, I'm going to save these little fabric bits. So these were from my flying monkey beads that I had on the shawl. So I'm going to save this for Friday. <laughs> yes, it's a happy bat of fiber. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So I just have a little bit more and then we'll be good to go for the last bit and I'll take it off so you can see what it looks like. I'm just gonna put a happy little yarn scrap here. Okay, so we got this part going and now I have all of these little bits here. So I just wanna show you right? Like if you cut the fibers too small, then they're not going to necessarily want to stay in. So I can try, but when you fight the nature of something, you, you learn what works and what doesn't. Okay. So just to, you know, um, go with the spontaneity of it all, I'm going to put white on this side, but for the fun of it, I think I'm going to add um, a little bit of that rust color fiber just to top it off because why not? There are no rules, only what feels right. All right. Oh wait, um, so I didn't quite show you yet, so I'll turn it on the other side. I don't know if it's gonna show up. Just so you can see, right? So my fiber is not going past the tines, right? So it's maybe like, um, I wanna say like three quarters of the way full, not even. So there's like a bend in the tines, and I don't know if it's gonna like, here. This is a very awkward thing to pick up. Let me see if I can get it. Okay, so you can see that I'm not really going um, past the bend, right? So when we looked at the hand carter, hang on, where did my hand carter go? So when I showed you over here, right, like how there is the bend in the teeth, I'm not, I'm not going past that, okay? Because then it's not, it's not going to, to work as well, so... I'm kind of staying in that range. All right, so I'm finishing up with the white and I'll, I'll know that it's done because either I'm gonna run out of fiber like I just did or because, you know, I can't really see much of what's underneath it. Okay, so now on this side, I'm gonna add a little bit of this color fiber. I'm gonna see. I want to get one that's a little bit um, darker and more saturated. Okay. See, so yeah, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add this bit over here, and we'll see what that does. Okay, so now that it's all sealed and contained for the most part, I'm going to go through and see what other little bits that I can salvage in this part here. Okay, so this is where having tweezers can come in handy. So I don't want any fiber to go 
like on the sides, but in this space, right, I might have little bits that are stuck in here. And so they might just be sandwiched in and they won't come out. So I'll go with my tweezers and kind of pull out whatever little bits I can. And these are just like um, regular craft tweezers, but there are ones that are longer and I like them. And I, I would have to go rummaging for mine. I just I had these ones out um, so they were easier to grab. But there's other ones that are like um, kind of like scientific ones and they have like a little um, like pressure clamp thing. So they're really easy for using to get out all these little bits. So I'll just throw them right there. Throw a happy little yarn scrap right there. We'll just throw some more there. Okay, so now is the time to, to pull it off, right? And when you're, you're pulling off a bat, you can make a couple of decisions about it. Like, um, do I want to pull this off as one cohesive bit or do I want to pull it off into thinner strips? So I'm going to pull it off as one cohesive um, you know, unit and that's going to be a bat. If I pulled it off and I used a tool that's called a diz or like that has like um, a hole to make it, you know, come out like a button, then that would be roving. Okay. So I want to leave this in bat form so that I can take this section and peel it apart from, from here. And then I can make other decisions too once I peel it off. If I want to do any further processing to it, um, any other preparation to it or <clears throat> excuse me, or um, how I might want to spin it. So if I pull it off as roving, it's going to kind of limit what my choices are. So I'm just going to wait to do that. Okay, so I think I got pretty much all of the goodies. There we go. So I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm kind of ha half like Bob Ross and half like um, Emerald Gassi with like his butter, you know, just let's just throw some more in. Why not? There we go. Okay. Throw this little guy and there we go. Okay. So to take it to take it off, right? When you rotate the um, the handle around, you'll see there's like a a ditch with um, like a metal um, like gap. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the tool. I'm gonna go under as low as I can go, and then try to pick it up. So this over here is called a doffing stick. So this fiber is so grippy oh, and so, so greasy on the other side that I have to go maybe about halfway through. See, I didn't want to break up too much of this stuff, but got to make sure I don't necessarily whack you in the face as the camera, right? Have sharp objects coming at you in a demonstration is not the way to do it. So yeah, this is a pretty dense, so even though this is a narrow, you know, um, drum carding cloth distance, it still can pack on a lot of fiber and I can weigh it and let you know like how much the bat actually weighs. I would say that this is probably going to give me about like one to two ounces. Okay. So the trick to this, right, if I want to get this off as like one piece, I can grab it, let me move this down so you can see. Okay. So over here, there's like this hard wooden edge. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Exactly. Throw in the yarn scraps, just like emerald. Okay. So I'm going to try to get it to go where, um, the, the edge of the bat is kind of hanging off over here. Right. Okay. And so I'm going to, I'm going to grab it as like, you know, um, one, one unit and I'm going to rotate it. Now, when I pull it off, I have to make sure that I'm going to, put this brush up, right? So I'm going to unscrew this here and then rotate it so that it's not going to ruin the bristles. Bam, <laughs> a little bit more. Okay. Let's go back to the side. Okay. So if I rotate it and come down like that, right? Like you can see, this is really nice and clean. If for whatever reason you have stuff that's still in here, like if your bat is not like um, thick enough or cohesive enough to, to pull it off, that's when you can use this tool. Now what's interesting is if you notice, right, it, it kind of is going in the opposite, right? No, it's going in the same direction as a hand carter, the tines, right? They're both going in the same direction. So if you don't have a little one of these and you have, you know, a hand carter, it works just as well. 
but um, the tines on this one are closer together, okay? So you can see this one, right? The tines are set further apart. And then this one, they're closer together. So this one is more grippy. And so I can go and kind of pull, you know, the fibers going in the opposite direction. So, um, you know, pull, pulling down and then it'll allow them to, to grab onto here. So I'm just going to pull down and I'm not, you know, pulling this like super hard to like separate the fiber. I'm just using the, the wooden, you know, edge as leverage for peeling it off. Okay. I had a little escape artist. Wait, okay, see? So right here, right? I have someone that's trying to not follow the group. So I'm just gonna grab them. If you don't wanna get this activity happening here, you can just use your tweezers too so that it doesn't put more neps in if that's not desirable. There we go, okay. So now that I have everybody, All right. Okay. So let's see, get all this stuff cleared off. Okay. So, you know, you can see that, um, yeah, it's definitely, okay. So someone asked, what is this small tool that looks like a dog brush? Yeah, it's basically like, it's basically like um, a dog brush. So I think this is called a slicker. I can't remember if this is like a slicker comb or a slicker brush, but yeah, it's basically like um, a cat or a dog brush. You could use those too. But you can see because of the way that I did the layering, you know, I have the stuff that were, was trying to be, <laughs> let me let me sit down so I can be back on camera, hang on. So I have I have the stuff that was trying to be um, an escape artist, right? And and they were trying to, to get away um, from me while I was carding. So I have those sitting on top, but for the most part, you know, you can you can see that everything is nicely sandwiched in, okay? And I had enough of a base um, that it's, you know... You know what? It would be cool if you did, like, um, a red layer, a green layer, and... Um, I can't remember, what is it? Red, red, yellow, and green for those, like, Italian cookies. I don't, I don't know if any of you like those cookies, but you could certainly um, make it those colors, too. But, yeah, so I have... I don't know why my camera's freezing, but you could see... There you go all of those little bits are sandwiched in there. Okay. So I'm going to save this. I'm not, I'm not going to spin it. I'm going to resist the urge. I'm going to, I'm going to resist the urge, right, to spin this. And I will come back on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, to demonstrate how I would approach spinning this. Okay. So I encourage you, if you would like to spin along with me, please, um, you know, dive into the, the scraps if you've been saving them. Don't worry about if, you know, you're going to use it for something or not. If what I showed you today looked like it was fun and exciting to do and you have the supplies to do it, then... I say go for it, okay? So I'm gonna go and read through the comments, answer any questions. Again, if you are watching this on the replay, please feel free to, um, you know, tag me. You could just do, you know, at Alana Wilcox or whatever, and um, I will come in and, and answer any of your questions, okay? So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I will, fingers crossed, see you on Friday. Take care, everybody.